This video is sponsored by Mubi. I'm reliving the same day over and over. Groundhog Day, today. In the Greek myth of Sisyphus, Sisyphus is granted immortality, but he must spend eternity rolling a stone up a hill. A difficult and thankless task, and every time he reaches the top, the stone comes rolling back down. Unable to die, Sisyphus is destined to a life of laboring without any hope of escape or measure of progress. If we strip away the future with its consequences for our actions... Don't you worry about cholesterol, lung cancer, love handles? I don't worry about anything anymore. Leaving us with only our own existence and how we live each day. Can we find meaning in life? Existential philosopher Albert Camus saw that as the absurd plight of humanity. Stuck toiling in a godless, meaningless universe, our labor ultimately amounting to nothing. In his essay, The Myth of Sisyphus, Camus uses the Greek legend as a metaphor for our lives. So does Groundhog Day. What would you do if you were stuck in one place? and every day was exactly the same, and nothing that you did mattered. Now that sums it up for me. And so does the 2020 Andy Samberg rom-com Palm Springs. Good day so far? Today, tomorrow, yesterday, it's all the same. It's a metaphor that might feel especially appropriate right now when many of us have been stuck at home on our own for days. Four weeks, I don't know, my sense of time is a little fuzzy. Living days that might feel more mundane and repetitive. <laughs> Watch out for that first step, it's a doozy! In Groundhog Day, Phil Connors plays a sort of cosmic game. Stuck reliving the same day in a town he hates, surrounded by people he hates, he despises everything around him. Upon realizing his new fate, what the hell? He moves from the pursuit of hedonism to suicidal despair, Toast. to apathetically accepting his fate. I wake up every day right here, right in Punxsutawney, and it's always February 2nd, and there's nothing I can do about it. And finally, to personal transformation and finding meaning in virtuous selfless living. By the end of the film, he is freed from his prison, but he opts largely to continue living in the world he's been trapped in. Let's live here. A changed man, the town and people around him now look completely different. It's one of those infinite time loop situations you might have heard about. <laughs> that I might have heard about? Yeah. It's into this world that not only contains Groundhog Day, but its countless offspring that Palm Springs arrives. Palm Springs acknowledges its predecessor. Maybe it's a karma thing. What is? Yeah, what if it's like, to get out of this, you have to be selfless and then you're free. Oh my God, what if life just keeps going for everyone else here, but not you and me until we've earned our way out? But it has little interest in rehashing the same ground. Instead, it seeks to find something new and interesting in the concept by making some critical changes. <laughs> Palm Springs brings other people into the loop. Guess you followed me but this changes surprisingly little about the philosophical implications of the time loop world. With other people there, you can measure your internal change against those people. You got here, that's all that matters. But if you really wanna know someone deeper, it, it does matter. But still without a future, what does that change even mean? I'm not gonna see my kids grow up. Never gonna walk a little Libby down the aisle. By bringing other people into the loop, Palm Springs strengthens the concept as a metaphor for our own lives becomes not just about an individual's isolated search for meaning, but a community's search for meaning in the face of a seemingly absurd world. It doesn't matter that everything resets and people don't remember. We remember. We have to deal with the things that we do. Oh my God, cry me a river, Niles. And just like people in real life take different approaches to finding meaning, so do the characters stuck in the loop in Palm Springs. The universe henceforth without a master seems to him neither sterile nor futile. The struggle itself towards the heights is enough to fill a man's heart. One must imagine Sisyphus happy. For Camus, we must embrace the absurdity of life. Wait, stop! There's a bomb in the cake. Don't worry. I used to be a bomb guy. Everyone stand back! Camus says if we accept its meaninglessness and live passionately, we can find happiness. In Palm Springs, this is essentially what we find Niles trying to do. You just have to find peace, you know? 
In Groundhog Day, for a time, we find Phil Connors living this way. But I don't think either film ultimately accepts Camus' idea. In Groundhog Day, Phil eventually accepts the absurdity of his new life, but mere acceptance isn't enough. Is this what you do with eternity? Phil doesn't stay stuck in his new world. He's eventually granted freedom by whoever is running the cosmic game he's playing. It's so beautiful. But not just when he's accepted his absurd life. His freedom comes only once he's personally transformed. The moral of the story here is clear. Virtuous, selfless living is necessary to find true happiness and freedom. In Groundhog Day, there is some kind of ethical judge, which renders the universe not meaningless. And not like our world as Camus sees it. I'm a god. You're a god. I'm a god. I'm not the god. Palm Springs deconstructs this by eliminating an ethical moral basis for escape. I am the Antichrist. <laughs> I'm just kidding, there is no God. The character's position inside or outside of the loop isn't dictated by karma, fate, God, or some kind of ethic. Instead, it's just part of what Camus calls the formless chaos of the universe. Sarah and Niles have a choice to exit the loop or not. Are you scared to leave? What? No. <laughs> not at all. I just don't want to leave. Palm Springs sees the world as Camus saw it, without an ultimate ethical or moral judge but it ultimately rejects Camus' call not to seek meaning and to find happiness in accepting the absurd. Roy possibly models the closest thing to Camus' suggestion. At least for now, he accepts his absurd life. This was always a good day here, you know? Sarah refuses to accept her new absurd life. I can't keep waking up in here. And finds meaning in striving to overcome her plight. That was awful and crazy and it should never have happened. Putting her life in order and finding a way out, she is ready to move forward. Niles' journey is a little messier. For Niles, like Sarah, accepting the absurd isn't enough. I thought I knew how to live. I didn't. Or I don't. But he doesn't find his meaning in self-development and striving to progress. Both Groundhog Day and Palm Springs end with a couple in a relationship. In Groundhog Day, Rita is Phil's object of attention early on, but Phil isn't good enough for her, and she consistently rejects him. Do you think I'm acting like this because I'm egocentric? I know you're egocentric. It's your defining characteristic. By the end, Phil has realized he doesn't need Rita. Well, where are you going? Would you like to get a cup of coffee? I'd love to. Can I have a rain check? I've got some errands I've got to run, okay? He's found meaning by living a selfless life instead of making her a goal. It's only then that she becomes truly interested in Phil. Wow, well, I think you were a bargain. In Palm Springs, however, Sarah is where Niles is finding his meaning. Take a look around. Whatever you're after, it ain't here. Here I think the film is clear. Niles finds his happiness inside or outside the loop with Sarah. It's really irrelevant to me, as long as I'm with you. Phil Connors in Groundhog Day sidesteps Camus for another kind of existentialist philosophy. In the face of an absurd world where his actions have no consequences, Phil is making a Kierkegaardian leap of faith. He chooses to live virtuously without knowing if it will ultimately result in anything. When he does this, the karmic gods of Puxatawney let him out of the loop seemingly affirming his leap of faith. Kierkegaard would say that Phil, by acting in faith that his virtuous actions actually mean something, he's saved from his absurd life. Palm Springs uses the Sisyphean metaphor as a launching point for some fun philosophical meandering, but the answer it presents to the questions the metaphor brings up feel weaker to me personally than either Camus or Kierkegaard's. It's all meaningless, right? I mean, I hope it's not all meaningless. The best it can seem to muster is a lukewarm rejection of Camus' acceptance of the absurd. Cheers. To pretending not to care. And an affirmation that life, meaningless or not, is better spent with people you love. I can survive just fine without you, you know. But there, there's a chance that this life can be a little less mundane with you in it. But I think that's okay. That's a super low bar. That's a great place to start.
While it's fun to talk about the philosophical implications of these two films, having a coherent philosophical viewpoint is not what makes a good movie. And to some extent, by not giving a hard answer, Palm Springs reflects real life. It brings up some questions and provides multiple potential answers, but it's still up to you. How will you find meaning in the loop? Special thank you to Mubi for sponsoring this video. Mubi is an online streaming cinema with a heavy focus on curation. They have a library of international indie and art house films that's available worldwide, and every day they add a new film with an explanation of why they think that film is worth watching. The film I'm going to recommend to you today is Werner Herzog's new Family Romance LLC. The film is narrative fiction, but he shoots it almost more like one of his documentaries. It's an interesting exploration of performance, truth, and lies, and I recommend you check it out if you're a fan of Herzog's work when you get your free trial at mubi.com slash thomasflight. That's M-U-B-I dot com slash Thomas Flight for your extended free trial. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I want to give a special thank you to my patrons. Go to patreon.com slash Thomas Flight to learn more about how you can support the ongoing creation of content on my channel.